better time than right now. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Thankful for another wonderful opportunity to be here, to be able to, again, come with like-minded believers and speak on and hear the beautiful and wonderful things that Jesus Christ has provided for us and made available for us. And as I always like to say, that's our heart's goal here at Word of Promise is to take the same promises of what Jesus Christ has provided for us that we have received, that we walk in and go and take that word to others so others may hear, receive and walk in it as well. And so what we have been talking about as of late is in relation to these promises, we have to talk about how they are received. And so what we've been on for a little while now is a series on faith, a series on faith. And what we specifically uh, I want to talk about today is how faith leads to knowledge and how knowledge ultimately leads to good works. Again, we oftentimes wonder, okay, we understand that we're not justified or right before God because of uh, any good works of our own, any good thing that we do. Uh, we know that it is only because we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and what he's provided for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. We understand that it is only through that that we are justified, that we are right with God, that we are saved. Um, but that does not, again, discount that there are going to be good works that are a byproduct of this salvation process and everything that God uh, is wanting to do in and through us, through this salvation, by his grace, by the change that he's provided. And so that's what we're talking about now, how ultimately our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ leads to knowledge, what the Bible calls knowledge, and how ultimately by that knowledge, these good works that God has prepared beforehand are going to manifest in our lives, are going to come to pass in our lives. And so last time we, we uh, were here, we talked about a couple things and we Use as one of our foundation scriptures, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15, starting at verse 15, where it says, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. This is, again, Paul speaking to these believers in Ephesus. And we know that these are believers because he says, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's speaking to believers. But look at what he says that he is doing for them. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is what Paul says. I'm praying for you guys who have come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, this is my prayer. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So to these individuals who he shows as believers, he's saying, I'm praying to God. I don't cease to pray concerning this, that God will give to you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And we talked about what that spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, in the knowledge of him is. We said it's uh, number one, it is a posture of our hearts where we are ready to let go of what we have in and of ourselves. That's the num number one thing. Again, it is us being brought to a place in our hearts where we are, are, are ready to let go of what we have claimed to and operated in before salvation, before that which is of us. It's our hearts being ready to let go of that. We said number two is a posture where we are tired of the failed glory we attempt to attain for ourselves. Where again, we through trying to get it together, fix this, stop this, we're attempt attempting to attain some type of glory, some type of, again, exaltation in self. Well, it's us being brought to a place where we're tired of that. We're weary because of trying to do that. And then it's number three. It is a posture that desires 
what Christ has provided to replace what we have already. And so again, it's just like us. We have our own righteousness. We have our, if I do this and get this together, I'll be right. That's my righteousness. Well, again, there's a glory in that. There's an exaltation of Jason if he accomplishes that. Well, when Jason is at the point where he's tired of that and he's ready to let go of that and he's ready to replace that with what Jesus Christ has provided, that is him having now this proper posture for God to be able to flood Jason with wisdom and revelation where God can now reveal to Jason who Christ is. That's what revelation is. Who, where God is now saying, I can flood your heart with revelation of who I sent Jesus to be for you. And I can also, again, that wisdom is, I can also, again, uh, uh, reveal to you the outcome of me sending Jesus, why I sent Jesus, what's the result of him coming, what's the outcome. I can now reveal that to your heart and ultimately as I reveal that to your heart, it's gonna do a couple of things. And we read as we continue on in Ephesians, it does something. First thing it does is the eyes of your understanding now are enlightened. Because again, you are weary, tired, broken because of your way and your attempt to gain glory, your attempt to get it together. You're broken by that. And now you're what? Your heart is ready to now turn to look to the Lord so that God can now reveal to you who he is and his the purpose of him being sent, that it's a, a, a result of that is now my eyes are enlightened uh, by the one who is the light, Jesus Christ. And we talked about that last week, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, where now we can see. Before, it was a picture of us walking in darkness where we couldn't see our way again. But now our eyes are enlightened where now we can start to what he calls here, he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. He says that you may know or come to that knowledge that we again talked about, that he said that that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him it, um, is in. It is in the knowledge of him or it causes the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ to be formed in that. So the picture is again broken because of my way. Now my heart is ready to turn and look to see Jesus as everything that he came to be for me. Well, now that that happens, God can flood my heart with who he came to be and the purpose for which he came to be. And that's a picture of a light shining down and filling up my understanding. And that understanding that is now working in me is called knowledge. That's why he says, as a result of the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, you're going to know. And he says this, you're going to know what is the hope of his calling. You're going to know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You're going to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And so he says that these are all different enlightened understandings that are developed in us as our hearts are turned toward the Lord. That again, this hope of his calling, this riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. These are all things that remember Paul is praying that these believers have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him so that this happens. So this isn't just, oh, okay, it's just automatic because you saved. No, this happens again when, again, that posture of brokenness and weariness of my way is there that causes me to turn, look to the Lord, where now the Lord can now flood me with the truth of who his son came to be, revelation, and the purpose for which he came to be that wisdom. He can flood me with that and it starts to now renew my mind, renew my thinking, renew my understanding. And it is renewed in what we call knowledge, called knowledge or what God calls knowledge, not what the world calls knowledge, but it's the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so, again, all this is just a little review. So that knowledge 
of God, knowledge of Jesus Christ is shown in scriptures in a, as a couple different things. We just looked at a couple of them, but some of them are as in, as being found in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 through 10. It's the knowing or having the knowledge of the fellowship of Christ's suffering or the knowing or having the knowledge of the power of Christ's resurrection. That's Philippians chapter 3, verse 8 through 10 and Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 19 that we just read is shown there on knowing the riches of the glory of Christ's inheritance in the saints. That's Ephesians chapter one, verse 18, or knowing the hope of God's calling. Ephesians chapter one, verse 18, or knowing the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. That's Ephesians chapter three, verse 19, or knowing or having the knowledge of his will. That's Colossians. Chapter one, verse nine, all of these fall under the umbrella of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. All of these are types of that knowledge that are formed in us when as our hearts are turned toward the Lord and he's now what revealing to my heart who Christ is. He's revealing to my heart the purpose for which Christ came to be who he came to be. Well, this. It's what is going to start to be formed in me. This type of understanding called, again, this called the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Christ. And so I want to go over just a couple of these uh, today just to kind of show, because uh, what I ultimately want to do is I want to show how, again, simple faith in Jesus Christ leads to these, this knowledge come to pass. And then ultimately what we're going to show that as this knowledge is working in us, it leads to the good works to come to pass. That this is again, as we've said on many occasions, the domino effect. This isn't something that a person has to try to do. These are all things that God is doing internally in us. But when though? When our hearts are turned here. That, that, see, that's the only, if we go back to this scripture back over here. He clearly says, I heard of your faith, but I'm praying that you have this spirit of wisdom and revelation uh, in the knowledge of him. Meaning what? Not everybody has it. Mm -hmm. He's praying for it. Now, does it mean that because he prays, he prays that it's going to guarantee happen? No. Why? Because it's determined on them. It's determined that each one of us individually. So again, this right here, us having this brokenness because of my way, if I'm still satisfied, with my way, me living my way, then again, what am I not going to do? I can hear about Christ all day, but I'm not going to turn and allow him to be all of that to me. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay in my way. And then this is what, again, oftentimes what happens is I stay in my way and I take those scriptures or those truths and start to twist them to line up with my way. And that's what we don't want. We want that those scriptures, those truths of what Jesus Christ has done to cause us to turn, to look to him, to be all of that. And as that happens, then our hearts and minds are going to start to be renewed in a different understanding where we start to see differently and start to understand differently. And so as we uh, go through some of these, I want to talk about really all of them. We're going to go through all of them. I just want us to really see how ultimately again through simple faith in Jesus Christ uh, that it starts to now cause us uh, excuse me let me say it right through simple faith in Jesus Christ that seed planted in our hearts what ultimately then happens is the truth of, of Jesus Christ and who he is being poured on top of that seed in, in one place in 1 Corinthians, it gives it as an example of a seed planted in the ground and then that seed being watered. Well, the picture is what? It's that seed being in the ground is us having what? That seed of the gospel, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that seed planted. Well, then what has to happen though, just like with the natural seed, that seed has to be watered. Well, the picture is it is watered with wisdom and, and revelation. Meaning what? You have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful. But now you need to have revealed to you who he came to be. Now you need to have the wisdom of why 
He came to be that the outcome. Mm -hmm. And that's a picture of water coming down. And now what happens to that seed in the ground? It starts to swell up, crack open, and starts to form roots and starts to form a vine. Well, this is the picture that he's given in regard to us. That as that seed again is in our hearts and we're saved. Bless the Lord for that. But now it's being watered with the truth of who Christ came to be, which we don't know at first. We don't know when we first get saved, all of who he came. Most, mostly what we know is he died for our sins and he raised from the dead. And that's wonderful. And if you trust in him and that his payment for your sins is enough and what he did, that's wonderful. But now you need to learn, okay, what, who did he come to be for me as that resurrected Savior? Go ahead, sir. You got something? Yes. Yeah, um, and that's the importance of wisdom and revelation. Mm hmm with belief, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what have you, because unless you have that mm -hmm. of wisdom and revelation, mm -hmm. you won't understand the things that he's working in and through you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what have you, because what's for Jason is Jason, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's for Reg is Reg, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what we got is common is our faith in him, that's right, exactly, and what not, and what's even more so, is the knowledge and revelation mm -hmm. that he reveals, uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely, your situation is different from mine, yeah, but yeah. nevertheless, he's breaking the same thing oh, your come on now. That's as he is mine. That's exactly oh. right. My goodness. So. And, and that's the thing. He's taking that same wisdom, that same revelation of who he came to be, mm -hmm. that he's pouring in your heart. He's pouring in my that's heart. Right. Our situations may that's be different, right. but right. again, it works that's ultimately right. for the good and for the purpose right. that God has called specifically for each one of us. Within the body of Christ. That's Go right. ahead. And if I may uh, also state that uh, even now where we lose it, those who say they are, are in Christ but seeking their own way, mm. where we lose it, we see the world around us Man. going in one direction and we want to go in the direction Man. of the world. My goodness. And God want to move us in a different direction. Exactly. And, and that's the purpose to see, hear me. The world is revealing something to you too. Exactly. They're, they're constant. And hear me. And we, again, before we were getting saved, we were being constantly filled with that, uh, that understanding of the world and how the world wants us to see. And so now God is saying, I'm wanting to reveal to you who my son is mm -hmm. and the purpose for which I sent him. And what that is going to do is going to start to renew your understanding that causes you to go in a different direction. Hear me, there are a lot of saved believers, they still going in the direction of the world. Does that mean they're not saved? No. But what it does mean is that they have not been given that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of them, but they're broken enough by yeah. that way. Yeah, exactly. they, they're not, they're, they're still satisfied with that way. They're still satisfied with the results of me, 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 mm -hmm. me. Uh -huh. They're still satisfied with uh -huh. that. And as long as that's the case, again, they won't turn and allow the truth of who Christ came to be for them to work in their hearts and the wisdom of God uh, to work in their hearts to now renew their understanding that they can now walk in what God has provided. They'll still walk in their own way instead of what God has provided. And so again, this spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him is important. And again, he's clear. He's saying, I'm praying God gives this to you believers, meaning that, does, that meaning not all believers have this. Meaning you can have it or you cannot. And this will determine, again, the direction that you go. Whether or not your, the eyes of your understanding are enlightened to where now you're, call, you're walking in what God calls walking in the light. Mm -hmm. Walking in the mm -hmm. truth. Seeing things the way God wants you to see. People and himself and all of that. That will determine uh, uh, whether or not you, again, are turned toward the Lord Jesus Christ that will determine whether or not you have his understanding working on the inside of you. And his understanding working on the inside of you determines the direction of your life. That's whether right. or not you walk in what God has called you to and, 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 and call for all believers to walk in. Or you continue in the way of the world. Save them. Mm -hmm. Save. Mm -hmm. And that's important. Save. I'm not saying this isn't a, a distinguishing of whether saved or not saved. 
This is again because we know now some people that go to church they're not saved. That's true. But again, there are some people who are saved, but yet they the eyes of their understanding has not been enlightened to where they start to have God's understanding working in them, and now they can start to walk in what God has called mm -hmm. them to do. Yeah, I also may say that, um, of course, the Lord Christ let us know that He wants us to be uh suffer as he suffered mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or what mm -hmm. have you and that's the thing that uh uh christianity mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um don't um uh, follow after the way of mm -hmm. suffering mm -hmm. christ said um you know be assured that they hated me before mm -hmm, they hate you mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they don't mm -hmm. hate you because of you mm -mm. It's who you represent. That's, exactly right. That's who they hate. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I believe that um, he allows suffering. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not that we go out and look for no, it, yeah, yeah, but yeah. if it happened upon us, mm -hmm. then we have the wisdom and revelation to mm -hmm. know that oh, my. He's being his will is being done. If mm -hmm. I submit to it, my, 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 what my. have you, and therefore, uh, 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 once I submit to it, according to his will, and time and he will be revealed mm -hmm. why this must be. That's because that's some things we have to go through. My goodness. According to his glory, we have to go through, we have to recognize um uh that all things Work in regards to him make for our good that's and his exactly. glory. That's exactly right. Why not? But when we want to do our thing, when we don't want no suffering, mm -hmm. you know, we gotta um we 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 gotta do some uh, examination mm -hmm, or what mm -hmm, have you. Mm -hmm. I heard that um, you know everything good is not necessarily good. It's mm. something wrong. Right. It's everything good, something wrong. I mean. Or what have you. And uh, even the word let us to know that that um, woe unto you and all men <laughs> see good of you. Mm -hmm. or, 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 or what have you. So mm -hmm. we just have to get to that point of the wisdom and revelation. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Because the belief is there mm -hmm. because we live in, in a capitalistic society. Mm -hmm. We live in a capitalistic church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I according mm -hmm. to this world, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 you got one better off than the other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the church, and that should not be. Mm -hmm. Because that wasn't the church, that, that wasn't the, the way the first church established. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, you know, they people go according to time mm -hmm. or what have you. Even though he put us in the dispensation of time, the Lord himself or whatnot, he's beyond time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, hey, man, I just thought I'd share that. Yeah, and, that, and that's good because, again, uh, even with that, it's, it's the having this enlightened understanding, the eyes of your understanding and life, mm -hmm. whatever may come. You exactly. have God's view and understanding that will be worked in you and that allows you to go through the good, the bad, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so again, but it, and, and it ultimately leads to you uh, to walking in what God has called you for. And that's, and that's what, again, is important to understand is that this understanding that God is saying, I'm wanting to renew your mind and I'm wanting to cause you mm -hmm. to see differently. Yeah, you trusted me. Now let me reveal right. to you all of yes, who I came right. to be so that now yes, your entire thinking can yes. start to be different yes. from how it was before. If I think the same way I thought before I was saved, something's wrong. Exactly. And and I and him man, I know a lot of people don't like this. If I think the same way unsaved folks think, something's wrong. That's right. Something's wrong. I'm a you know I ain't talking about you know regular stuff. You know like learning how to buy a car and a house and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about your the renewed thinking in your marriage and your raising of your children and how you interact right. with people with the purpose of That's life right. and all these different things. If I got the same thing that just the other folks got, then it's something wrong. Exactly. Something, something's wrong right. there. And so again, ultimately what God is wanting to do is form in us that knowledge, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And here are some examples I want to, again, use today to, to kind of show how these things are formed in us through now 
are simply trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and God now revealing him, revealing him to us and revealing to us his purpose in coming. So I want to start off with, again, uh, the knowledge or to know the riches of the glory of his inheritance mm -hmm. in the saint. Paul presented this as one of the knowledges of God. And so I broke this down as far as what this means, what it means to have this knowledge. And so I said this, I said to have this knowledge is means that we have a perspective, a view, a understanding where we have the proper high value for the things that God has freely given to us in Christ. That's all this is. It is simply an understanding where everything that Jesus Christ has provided and made available for us, I have this high exalted view of. Again, when we talk about the love and the joy and the peace and the righteousness and the kindness, all these different things that God is wanting to work in us and do us, that's that inheritance. That's the inheritance. Well, some people will say, hey, that's cool. I want money. I value money. I value riches. I value, again, this and that. I want this. And what God is saying, I want you to value what my son has done because that's far more important. That's more important what it is I provided for you as an inheritance in him. Again, that love. Again, that kindness. That peace. That joy. Again, that ability, like you said earlier, to whatever may come. To be able to endure, that's to be right. able to be long suffering in these different things. Again, that's far more important than a car that's and a house. But again, some people exalt that constantly. Mm -hmm. Like that's the main thing to get and to gain. When God is saying, know the riches of the glory of his inheritance, meaning the outcome of that love. That's what the, the uh, glory of something is. It's the outcome of that thing. The, what happens when that thing is present. And so when you think about what happens when the love of God is present in your heart and working in your life. The, what happens when the peace of God is present and working in your life regardless of what situation. That's what God is saying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to renew your understanding to now highly exalt that over anything else over anything else and so again this is how it works again as I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ I want y'all to see this pattern and now I'm broken because of my way I'm to all this I'm trying to get in and of myself so now my heart is turned and now it's being revealed to me all of who Christ came to be that he came to be that peace that he came to be that joy that he came to be that long suffering on the inside of me and that's being Poured into my heart. What is it going to start to do? It's going to start to cause me to highly exalt what it is that's, that's being right. poured in my heart. Y'all, that makes sense. Right. Y'all see that? Good. Amen. 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 And uh, you know, because it's not just materialism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It's a troubled soul. It's mm -hmm. a troubled heart. Mm -hmm. You know, your children ain't that. My children mm -hmm. ain't that. Right. Mm -hmm. my, my boss ain't that. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. But nevertheless, nevertheless, the Christ in you. My goodness. Content. If you allow him to continue to be him, yeah. Amen. Either uh that situation you may find yourself in with family members or mm -hmm, friends or mm -hmm, what have you, mm -hmm. you find that that either turn your way mm -hmm. or the Lord will turn you from them mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or them mm -hmm. from you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But but you know, but according to his kind, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. a lot of times and not, you know, um, we can't stand the suffering. Yeah, and 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 again and, and it's like when you value that what he's provided to enable you to go through that because some That's people right. break exactly. because of those things exactly. that come to pass in their lives well god is saying i'll give you the ability to endure yes that that come what may yes you'll be able to walk through it and it you'll benefit those individuals in whichever direction Mm -hmm. That the Lord leads you with that again, mm -hmm. it'll it'll ultimately benefit, and so that's what that that's what I'm saying is that as that is revealed to you, and and the Lord, and again, it's not just you take that information, but it's when the Holy Spirit makes that a reality yes. to your heart, yes. of, of and enables you again to walk through whatever come my way, whatever peace you uh, that that He's provided, you'll see that peace as so valuable. Mm -hmm. 
in relate in relation to what you're going through. You'll see that power, that strength, yes. the be it that that again that He's provided. You will highly exalt that. Yes. Versus again, what is constantly being presented in the world as highly exalt your will, highly exalt what you can attain, mm -hmm. highly exalt yourself, mm -hmm. versus highly exalting Christ and what He's provided. Again, that happens after I'm weary because I'm seeing the results of me trying to do it my way. Me trying to get it together. Me trying to help myself endure whatever's coming, whatever's happening. After I'm weary because of that, and I now have my heart turned to where now the Lord can reveal to me this inheritance that I have in Jesus Christ. This life, this love, this peace, this faithfulness, this endurance, this power, this strength. All these things are being revealed to me, revealed to my heart. And now it's giving me this particular view and understanding where now I highly value what Jesus Christ has provided and made available for me as an inheritance mm -hmm. over anything that I was attempting to attain myself. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. And so that's an example of what he's attempting to renew our understanding that's in. Right. Another one is to know the fellowship of his sufferings. And to know the fellowship of his suffering means it, uh, uh, we have a perspective and a view on our understanding where we consider all that we are and can do in and of ourselves as valueless, oh my, in light of the, the one who, uh, uh, excuse me, in light of who Christ is and what he can do, uh, uh, what he, excuse me, what he can do and has done for us. Let me read that again. To know the fellowship of his suffering means we have a perspective, view, understanding where we consider all that we are and can do in and of ourselves as valueless mm -hmm. in light of uh, uh, who Christ is and what he can do and has done mm -hmm. for us. And so I want you all to see this pattern here now. What do we just say about the riches of the glory of his inheritance? We have this such high value now. That start as now it's revealed to us who Christ came to be for us and it's revealed to us the purpose and the outcome yes, of him yes. being that. The first thing that happens is what we start to have this high value of who it is that he came to be for, for us. Well, what's the outcome of that? In light of me seeing uh, the great value of who he is, I see myself. Yes. I see all I was trying to do. I'll see all I was trying to make happen, all I was can accomplish in and of myself. So in light of that, I start to see what that which is of me is valueless. Mm -hmm. That's what it means that to suffer. Paul said in Philippians chapter three, I have suffered the loss of yes. all things and I count them as manure, mm -hmm. as animal excrement. And he's saying, I did that in light of me seeing all of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. All that he's provided for me. All that he's made available for me. Again, this is an understanding that God says, I'm going to form on the inside of you. Where you see that way. Where you see all that is of you as nothing in light of all that Christ is. So that now what? Christ can live in me. Because as long as I value me, what am I going to do? I'm going to still live according to me. As, as long as I value that. But if I now have seen all of who Christ is and, and, and allowed that to be revealed to my heart, it's going to cause me to look at my righteousness yes. in relation to his. Yes. My yes. trying to get peace in relation to his. Yes. My ability to be long suffering in relation to his. Y'all see that? Yes, right. I'm going to start to now compare them and see again because I see this as so valuable. This starts to diminish. Yes. We talked about that last week a little bit. Yes, Did you have something? Yes. And, I, and, and I like to say that you'll see, um, you'll not focus on the outcome of darkness. Mm. You'll focus more on, more or less on the outcome of the light. My goodness, yes, yes. Um, and and in that outcome, you're more to rejoice. Oh, my. And bless Come on. his name. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's a beautiful example because what does light do to darkness? <laughs> Pushes it away. Exactly. exactly. And so as now my heart is turned to the one who is the light, mm -hmm. it's removing that darkness.
darkness, all that I, what was of me, all that I was trying to do is now being, uh, again, devalued in light of who Christ is. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> And my way say it's no longer woe is me. Oh my but hallelujah. Oh come on now. Yes. Yes. Amen. And 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 that is and that is so true. And it's 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 again, this is an understanding that God is saying he wants to form in individuals and he will form in them as their hearts are turned toward the Lord. That's now right. again, how many folks we know value them? How many again us? If we look at all that we valued and, and everything, and so the the my point is that what God is saying He's wanting to do is to turn them individuals to see the one who is to be valued, and then they'll see their stuff properly. Then see a lot of times again we you know how they say you, I know you like to think your stuff don't stink, <laughs> and that's the truth. A lot of people just don't don't want to see. But again, so the only way God says you can see it is if you see it in light of him. That's right. See, I can tell you all day your stuff stink. I can tell you all day that, but that ain't going to do nothing. That's just me speaking darkness to try to dispel darkness. Only thing that I can do is turn you to the one who is the light, and the light will push away that darkness. That's right. And that's the only thing people have to be willing, though, to receive the light. Go ahead, sir. Exactly. And, and once again... According to the Lord, the wisdom and revelation is needed because you got a lot of people in Christ mm -hmm. that think of themselves highly. Oh my goodness, but, yes. But there's more to that, to 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 that faith in Him. My my. Than just like you said, just just um, believing that He raised the dead. Absolutely. That I mean, there's a whole lot more. A whole exactly. That's the whole purpose, and we've said this. On many occasions, that's the whole purpose of church. That's the whole purpose of Bible study. Right. And reading the word is so that the Holy Spirit can reveal to our hearts who Christ came to be. And ultimately, that light would dispel the darkness in our lives. Exactly. That's the whole purpose that's of it. Right. Again, and so this, again, this high exaltation of ourselves, again, that we have will be come and be removed by the light of who Christ is. Mm -hmm. Not not by the, mm -hmm. the light of, of me telling them how bad their darkness is. That's it's right. by the light of who Christ is. And again, and the only thing I keep saying that is that their hearts have to be willing to turn to the one who is the light. Or mm -hmm. else it ain't going to happen. And so that's another example of what God is attempting to renew our mind and our understanding in. Another one is what? To know the hope of his calling. That's another knowledge of God, knowledge of That's Jesus right. Christ. And I said to know the hope of his calling means we have a perspective or an understanding or a view where we earnestly expect to see what God has called us to in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's an understanding now where that which God has promised that he's going to bring to pass and manifest and he's called us to, to walk in, he's going to do He's going to do. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care what my situation. I don't care what I'm doing looks like. I know that what God has called us to is going to manifest. Yes. It's going to come to pass. But not all of us have that understanding. Yes. A lot of us will allow what we're going through, what we're doing, what's happening to determine what their expectation is. And God is saying, if you allow my son and who I am revealing him to, you ask, but not only that, but the wisdom, meaning what? Mm -hmm. The outcome, the yes. purpose of him yes. sending uh, Jesus to be what he came to be. And I have that working in my heart. Let me give you an example. Again, what has God called us to? He's, got, he's called us to be under grace and not under law. He's called us what? To be uh, uh, in the light and not in darkness. He's called us to good works and not to evil works. He's called us, again, to have his knowledge working in him, in us, and not ignorance. All these things he has called us to. He's called us to his power yes. working in our lives instead yes. of the power of sin. He's called us to, again, uh, a change in life. A, a, a set apart life. He's yes, called right. us to all of these things. And so as he reveals Christ to us and reveal the purpose, what he ultimately does is show how we again will be brought to that place of change. Mm -hmm. 
he'll, he'll reveal to us how we're brought to that place. And as he does that, as he shows us that this is what brings you out of darkness into light, Jason. This is how it happens. Again, now my understanding is starting to be renewed that, yeah, that which God has called me to shall manifest. That which he's called me to walk in. He's called me to walk in his grace. He's called me to walk in his power. He's called me yes. to walk in his life, his joy, his peace, his kindness, his good works. He's called me to walk in that. And so I have an earnest expectation. That's what the word hope means of what he's called me to. That it's going to manifest. Mm -hmm. I have this earnest expectation. Mm -hmm. And so God is saying, I'm wanting to renew your thinking yes. now. To where that's how you see it. Yes. That you earnestly expect for God to manifest the change. Not you looking at, hey, this is how I've been my whole life. No, I don't care how I've been my whole life. It, it, God says that in him, he's going to change. He's going to do this. Right. And so again, he's wanting to renew our thinking, though, that we see that way. That we see the way he wants us to see, mm -hmm. which again is that. And that's, again... What God is going to renew us to as our yes. hearts are turned toward the Lord. Okay. And he can reveal to us who his son came to be for us. And he can reveal to us that purpose, that, that right. outcome of him being uh, what he came to be in our lives. That again, he'll renew our understanding to where we earnestly expect to see what God has called us to. That he's called us out of darkness into light. You ain't got to be ignorant of the truth. That's all uh, darkness represents is you operating in ignorance, operating in your own understanding, your own view, which is all futile. That's right. And he says that, no, I've called you out of that to now walk in what? An enlightened understanding yes. Yes. where you can see the way I see. I've called yes. you to that. And again, and I'm going to renew you where you earnestly expect to see that manifest. In your life. Yes, right. As you earnestly expect to see that. Another example is what? To know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. Uh, and, and what that means is that we have this understanding or perspective or view of God's power in us. As being exceedingly great to be able to do in our lives what is needing to be done. My goodness, mm -hmm. man. We know... I, Hear me, most of us have lived our entire lives on the basis of what we've seen our own power do. That's, That's what we live. I've seen myself be this way, operate this way. I've seen myself try to get this together and fix this and it ain't work. And a lot of people live their lives on the basis of their own power. But what God is saying is that as you're turned toward my son and I'm revealing to you all who he is. All he came to be for you and the outcome of it, what it's going to start to renew you as because one of the things he is, is the power of God in your life that can change, that can renew, that can lead and empower toward that which God has called us to. He's going to renew our thinking now to see it as that which can accomplish everything God has said he's going to accomplish. I'm not basing my life on me anymore and what I've seen in my own willpower. And I've seen in my own ability, I'm basing it on what God can do by his power. Well, that's a renewed way of yes, seeing things. Yes, yes, that's a renewed yes. way. We hear so many, uh, uh, well, I ain't going to say so many, but there are messages out there where we just present this defeated gospel, where we just got to be in bondage. And, and, and oftentimes people present it thinking that they're presenting grace and saying that. You're not presenting grace and saying you got to be defeated. No, you're presenting grace when you're saying God is going to give to you freely the power to be changed. Mm -hmm. And don't let that be determined by what you see in your life right now. Let it, let it be determined because now, again, the revelation of who Christ came to be for you is working in your heart. Let that renew your mind. Let that change how you see so that you have this, this knowledge of his, the exceeding greatness of his power. How much power he is and how great his power is to work in your life. That's what God is saying. Again, I want to renew your thinking is. And he's saying because that's how he sees it. He knows what his power can do in your life. He wants you to know. He wants you to have the understanding of what his power can do in your life to change you. Go ahead, sir. Hey, man. That's some good stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I would believe that the Lord wants us to know that in him, 
who is spirit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but who came in the form oh, my. of sinful flesh, mm -hmm. but he's spirit. Nevertheless, um, um, being in our humanistic ways mm -hmm. is no good. Mm -hmm. There is no good. The end result of our ways is no good. Mm -hmm. But to become spiritual, mm -hmm. that which was not seen made things which do appear. That's exactly right. So it's in him. Oh, that's it. Is the answer to all that's things. That's it. That's it. Because by his word, he walked for mm -hmm. all things. Mm -hmm. And by his word, he pleased God Absolutely. for what happened. Yeah. You know, it's. Even in that, it just shows that it was the Lord who quickened it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Back in life, but in a different manner. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A, it's, and, and, it, and that's the thing. He's wanted us to have the understanding that that same power that raised up Jesus from the dead yes, is what yes. dwells in the same one that that's quickened right. him. That's Again, right. it's what the Spirit of God on the inside of you is releasing, is going to release in your life to change you. Yes. That you didn't have that before. That again, when you were living according to you, you had your own power, but now you have the Spirit of God on the inside of you that is ready to release that exceeding great power in your life that will change you, totally That's change right. you, make That's you new. And he's saying, though, I want you, I'm trying to renew your thinking to see that way. Mm -hmm. I want to renew your mind and renew the, the understanding that you have to where that's how you see it. Again, you're trusted in me. Now you're allowing my, my uh, uh, spirit to reveal to you who Jesus came to be for you and the outcome and the purpose of it. And what God is saying that as I reveal to you who he came to be for you as that power and that strength, the change where you're released from you trying to do it in and of yourself. And now mm -hmm. it's him work living on yes. the inside of you. I want now your mind to be renewed to say that that power that raised up Jesus from mm -hmm. the dead dwells in yes. me. And it is exceeding great to do yes. in my life. The change yes. to renew, to lead, to guide. Again, he's wanting that renewal in our understanding to take place. And again, uh, uh, um, he's saying that that happens again as I was over here focused on me. I'm weary, broken by it, tired of it. And now I'm turned to look to Jesus for what he's came, come to be for me. And now what? The Spirit of God is revealing to me mm -hmm. who he came to be for me. The Spirit of God is going to reveal to me the purpose and the outcome yes. in my life of him that's being right. that in me. And that's going to start to renew my thinking and renew my understanding now to where I start to see differently. And I start yes. to see the power that is provided in Jesus Christ is exceedingly great to do in my life everything that God is wanting to do. Even though my, my power is weak. My power is futile, mm -hmm. but God's power, he says what, is, is his power or his grace is sufficient in weakness. His power uh, for his strength is made perfect. I think that's how yes. it says yes. in our weakness mm -hmm. again. And so his power is exceedingly great to carry me to where God is wanting me to go, to change me in the way that God is wanting uh, me to be changed. His power is able to do that. And God is saying, I'm wanting you to have this understanding of that. Because God says, I have that understanding. Mm -hmm. I know what my power can do in your life. Right. See, God knows That's that. Right. He knows how He can, how his power working in you can change. But he says, I want your mind renewed yes. to see that as well. Yes. Where you walk around with that understanding. Where you see that particular way. And not see and not let, again, your... Your, your expectation or what you know of the ability to be changed to be determined by what you see with yourself. Because again, if I get in me, I know the outcome of that. And I need to know the difference between the two. I need to know what happens when Jason gets in Jason, but I need to also know what happens when God's power working in me and changing me. And I need to have this exceeding view and of, of this great power that God is providing. And so another example of uh, um, uh, knowledge 
is to know the love of Christ. And so to know the love of Christ or to have that knowledge working on the inside of you means that we have an understanding or a perspective or a view where we seek to receive everything that God through Christ has provided for us in his love, which causes us to desire to operate in that same love towards others. Mm -hmm. And it's this understanding now where because everything that God has done is all based in his love. Everything he did in Jesus Christ was out of love. He did it again. He offered grace to us. He offered change to us. He offered forgiveness to us. He offered justification to us. He offered all the inheritance to us, all of the life, all the power, all the strength, all the, the again, the long suffering, the change, all of that God gave out of his love towards us. That's right. All of it was out of his love. And so God is saying that when you, what happens is, as Christ is revealed to you, remember what did God, what does it say in John 3, 16? God so what? Loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus Christ came to be and do was out of God's love for us. Right. And so God is saying, as now it is revealed to your heart, all of who Christ came to be for you, it is all a representation of my love for you. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to be worked in your heart. That this is how much I love you. I love you this much that I have provided this for you. And so now as that love is constantly revealed to my heart that everything that God has provided in Jesus Christ was out of his love, what is it going to start to cause me to do? No. To love others. Mm -hmm. It's going to cause me to start to operate with others in the same unconditional way that he operated with me. Why? Because everything he did was unconditional, right? Everything, and when I say unconditional, is not based on any goodness of our own. Mm -hmm. And so if I have that revealed to my heart, that everything that God has done for me and provided for me is no out of no goodness of my own, am I going to treat other people and interact with other people on the goodness of their own? Or am I going to base it on the unconditional love that God showed me? Well, again, to have the knowledge of the love of Christ is to have this understanding Working in you that God loved me so much that and that automatically leads me to love other people unconditionally. Not on the basis of any goodness of their own, mm -hmm. just like he did for me, but on the basis of, again, giving to them what is needed in order for them to walk in what it is that God has provided. That's what he did with me. He, give, he gives to me what I need in order to walk in what he, he's provided. And then again, I give to others what they need. Out of that same love for him, my love for others is to give to them what they need in order to walk in what God has provided for them. And as I as I, I, I do that, again, it is nothing more than a reflection of what it is that I, I have received and know of God's love for me. You have something? Yes. Um, now, I take issue with that as far as... Mm -hmm. You know, as uh, far as the unconditional love, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because now I see it as based on condition of mm -hmm. receiving to and, receive that unconditional the, love, that, and that's the only what part. Have you. Because um, you know, uh, uh, to make that statement is to let the sinner man knows that you don't even have to receive it. He died. No, not unless you receive uh, it. Absolutely. Does he love you unconditionally? Absolutely. That you put your sins in the, you know. Well, now he loved them unconditionally. It's whether or not they received that right, love. Right. And that, right. and that, because it's the, and 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 I'm that's so good as well because in, even in relation to how we operate with others, mm -hmm. I can love that person unconditionally, but they can reject that love. Yeah, Again, exactly. I, I, you know, and so in the same way with uh, with people, God loved them regardless in providing Jesus Christ. Now, did they? Re then the, the the question is, are they receiving that love? Exactly. That doesn't change God's love for them. Uh, what it what it does is it, it reflects whether or not they received it or not. Go ahead. Exactly, I would see that um, um, it doesn't change God. Love for them because mm -hmm. it says why you will get sinners. Yeah, yeah. Christ died mm -hmm, for you. Mm -hmm. So it, it lets me know unless we receive yeah, it. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. And that unconditional love. Yep. Yeah. Or what have you? I 
it's hard for me to see that um, the real his mercy is doing it. They do it for you. As far as mm -hmm. life itself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's not obtainable mm -hmm. unless one receives it. Uh, absolutely. And, and that's the thing. And that's, that's the thing, the, uh, the important thing to understand when it comes to the, the love of God. And the fact that it is unconditional in the sense that you can't earn it or gain it mm -hmm. or, re or, or receive it by your own works right. or anything like that. It is simply something that is received again. And so, but the, the, but like you said, it has to be received. It's just like, again, with that person, God has already sent Jesus Christ to do everything he came to do. Okay, but it's a matter of are people going to be led to the place where they receive it or not? Right. That's, now, right. God doesn't love them any less. Again, if they don't, his love has already been issued out. That's been presented. It's again, it's, it's like a, I almost want to present it as like if I just take these little tiny droplets of love over here and over here, over here. Okay, I love everybody in here enough to provide that. But if that person chooses not to go and get that, that ain't me not loving them. That's me still loving them, but it's just they're not at the place where they choose to receive. I don't love them any less. They just won't benefit off of my love that I have uh -huh. from them. They won't receive the benefit of it. Go ahead. Uh-huh. And uh, another thing that gets me when people who's not even in the will call themselves a child of God. Uh -huh. Because... The word lets me to know that as many have received that, oh, oh my. to them he made the sons of God. Yes, exactly right. So mm -hmm. in that, I I, I take issue with oh, my. when one calls themselves a child of God. My, my. Now, I mean, you call yourself, you you know, it's relative. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it is. As, yeah. as opposed to a son of God, mm -hmm. or when I, those who had received it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or what have you, you know, um, let us know that, you know, basically, other than those who have received him, mm -hmm. even though uh, the scriptures don't say, but our creations. Oh my, uh, and, that's, and that's exactly right. And all uh, because we are new creations in Christ, it's, where uh -huh. we become, again, children of God through exactly. faith in Christ. It says that in Galatians and in other places. Mm -hmm. So that is so true. And so again, that, that um, knowing the love of Christ is understanding, again, that unconditional love that God has provided for me in Jesus Christ, as that is constantly being poured into my heart, it leads ultimately to me operating the other individuals in the same mm -hmm. aspect. And again, because I have that understanding working in me that again, that, that love for me is, is again, is what God is providing and everything that he's made available for me to receive, he did it out of his love. And if that's the case, then I'm gonna to start to operate with others the same way. That's again what it means to know the love of Christ. And so again, and lastly, uh, to have the knowledge of his will. And that means that we have an understanding or perspective or view where we want what God wants because we see as God sees. That's what the knowledge of his will is. It is this understanding now where his will, again, his want, that's what that word will is the same, mm -hmm. where he wants to come to pass, again, where he wills to come to pass, where, again, us having the knowledge of his will is now where we want what God wants because we see the way he sees. Yes. Again, it's just yes. like when it comes to people, God wants them to be saved. He wants them to be saved. And we won't want them to be saved until we see them right. the way God That's sees them. Right. God sees them as sinners. He sees mm -hmm. them as individuals who are in darkness, who are lost, and, and hell is their portion if they reject him. And so he says, I in that, what did I do? I provided for them my son, Jesus Christ, to come and receive. Well, if I see the way God sees, then uh -huh. what am I going to do? I'm going to want what God That's wants, right. which is their salvation. Right. And I'm going to take what God has provided for them and go and present it to them. Mm -hmm. See, that is done because I see the way God sees. Mm -hmm. It's not done because just because, you know, I just... You know, oh, I just know, you know, folks need to get saved. No, I see them the yes. way God sees that God yes. loves them. That yes. God says I provided for them. Yes. And so because I see that way, then again, 
I want what God wants. It's the same thing with God wanting all of us, what? To be edified in the truth, to mm -hmm. grow, to learn, to have our understanding renewed. But as I see that, then yes. what? I will operate in what aids in that coming to pass That's in people's right. life. Because I see the way God sees. See, if I don't see the way God sees, then I just what? I just preach a happy message mm -hmm. every week and just play music and we get crunk and run around the room <coughs> And nobody learned anything. Everybody just be ignorant, yeah, right. but they can show enough to do the two-step. Yes. And see, again, that's, and that's done because people don't see as God sees. That's he doesn't right. see that's those right. individuals the way God sees. If you did, then you'll present a truth to them that causes them to be saved and cause them to be edified or come to the knowledge of the truth. That's, right. that's Again, that happens when you see the way God that's sees. That's right. When you see right. the way God sees. And so with all of these examples, all of these are things that are formed on the inside of us. When we live by faith in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we're broken again because yes. of the way of ourselves and what we try to do in and of ourselves. And we're turned to now look to Jesus and have his wisdom with him of, of who he came to be. And, and the revelation of who he came to be poured into our hearts. And now that poured into our hearts starts to form these on the inside of us. And many more. There are many, many more. But I just use these as, a, as some of the examples. But these start to now form on the inside of our hearts of our hearts and lives and these again are called the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Jesus Christ these are the same understanding that God had and that Jesus had what it said in, in, in Philippians chapter 2 what Jesus said he I forgot how it was written but it said that he oh man he he oh, how did it say he left humanity he left uh, uh, um, oh I can't remember uh, where he came down and he said he left uh, his high exalted place to come right. down here, right. you know, yeah, to humble himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and he didn't he didn't think you know ah oh, I'm just butchering the scripture, but it was it was talking about you know he didn't look at you know the the um, the uh, I'm a part of the Godhead. I shouldn't right. have to go down there high right. exalted. No, he didn't see it that way. He saw himself at a place where he was willing to humble himself. Right. He didn't he didn't value all of that That's over right. what God had called That's him to. Right. Well, it's the same thing with us. We won't value all that we again can do in and of ourselves over what God is saying I can do in the mm -hmm. in and through you. And again, these are all understandings. My point, um, these are all understandings that God and Jesus Christ has. Again, God knows of his power. That can work on the inside of you. He knows mm -hmm. how exceedingly yes, great it right. is. He knows how valuable the inheritance that you have in Jesus Christ is. He yes, knows right. that. He knows again that 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 he get, he knows for sure that what he's called you to, he's gonna bring to pass. Mm -hmm. He knows that mm -hmm. for sure. He knows again that love that he has for you and how it will change you, how it will renew you. He knows again. He knows what his will is. He that's knows right. that. And he's wanting all of us to come to that place. And that's why it says over here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, just to, uh, for time's sake. Verse 10, where it says, and have put on the new man. Look what he says. I, I'll read it from the beginning. Verse 9. He says, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man. Now catch this, what he says about the new man. Who is renewed in knowledge, in that knowledge of God, knowledge of Jesus Christ. And look at what he says. He's who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. So he shows here that this knowledge is according to the image of the one who created him. Wow. It's, it's God's knowledge that he's saying that I'm putting on the inside of you. His understanding, his way of seeing things that he says I'm forming on the inside of you and then the purpose then of that knowledge is so that the change can come and this is where we're getting to that point god is saying i'm ultimately renewing your understanding and the way you see so that the change can manifest look what he says over here in second peter chapter one verse two and three 
He says, grace and peace be multiplied to you in what? In the knowledge. In the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. So the first thing he shows here is that God's grace and peace is going to be multiplied in your life when you have that knowledge working on the inside of you. God's grace and his peace is going to be multiplied in your life. And then look what he goes on to say in verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through what? Through the knowledge of him who That's called right. us by glory and virtue. So he shows us here that the grace and peace of, in, uh, of God in our lives is going to be multiplied. And God's power is going to give us everything that pertains to life and pertains to godliness when that knowledge is working. So that knowledge is important. Yes. That yes. knowledge, meaning that what your mind being renewed to see differently and to see the way God sees is important because yes. that's what causes God's power, his grace and his peace to be multiplied in our lives. And then we know that as that grace and peace, uh, which he shows here is that power is multiplied in our lives. Look what it says over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. It says, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Why am I making all grace abound towards you? That, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Mm -hmm. So he shows us here what that grace being multiplied in our lives is going to do. It's going to make us sufficient for everything that God has called us to. Every good work that God has prepared beforehand. Everything that God has put in place comes as a result of, again, his grace abounding in our lives. And what causes that grace to abound in, in our lives? Us having his understanding. Yes, yes, working on the inside yes. of us. Again, and remember, going all the way back to the beginning, I trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord for that. But as long as I'm still satisfied with my way, I'm saved, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to experience any of this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to still walk in my way. I'm not going to see his power. Again, work in my life, his divine power, because I don't see as he sees. Right. And I don't see as he sees because I'm satisfied with my way. But if I'm trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and I look to him for what he's provided because I'm broken because of all I've tried to do in and of myself. Everything I've tried to get together in and of myself. I'm broken, tired, weary for all of that. I don't want my way. I don't want my will. I don't want uh, my power. I don't want my change. I don't want none of that. I tried that and I've seen the, the futile state of it. All of that. To the point now where I've been turned toward the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm trusting in you. And God is saying, I'm going to reveal to you everything he came to be. I'm going to reveal to you again the yeah. purpose for which he came yeah. to be that. And as that happens, it's going to start to renew your thinking, causing you to see differently. And as that happens, my grace is going to start to abound in your life. And my power is going to start to work in your life that's going to cause you to walk in what I've prepared for you. To walk in, to endure, to go through whatever situation may come, whatever may happen, whatever person is presented before you to proclaim, whatever role in ministry, all of that that God has called you to. He says, I'll bring it to pass as I renew your thinking and your understanding to see as I see. Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Amen. son. Uh, one more thing. Um, because, you know, from the first Adam in which we are offspring mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or, uh, mm -hmm. or what have you, uh, man, along with his offspring, mm -hmm. he came dead before God. Oh, my, yeah. And it was only through Christ. Yes, yes. And through the resurrection mm -hmm. that those who receive him can come alive. Again. Oh, my, yes. But nevertheless, not them, but the Christ oh, in them. Oh, come on now, yes. Which lives. Yes. So in that, it lets us to know that... Um, Wow, uh, we have life again. Oh, I don't even know about ourselves or whatnot, but through the knowledge, yes, because yes. he even part of the knowledge of oh, us, my. we know to let him do what we want to do. Yes, and yes. And through us, oh, my. why not? Because had we not known, we find ourselves uh, doing Israel, 
and say that, wait a minute, this ain't me. My mom. Or why not? And then turn the other way, turn my it back goodness. around. My goodness. And I'm do yourself t- again. Yeah, a- abs- absolutely. And again, and that's why that is so important mm-hmm. that God said that that brokenness because of that way that's right. is there. That's why, again, a lot of people fight against that. They just say, oh, yeah, this is grace, grace, grace. Well, again, that grace ain't good until I realized the true effect of what it was when I was living according to me. That grace really ain't nothing. And so it has to be the balance of the two where I acknowledge the truth of the error of my way and the foolishness of my way and the insufficiency of my way and what I was trying to do to the point now where, again, I've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ and now I've turned my heart to have revealed to me everything he came to be for me and as that happened God says I can renew your mind I can change the way you think and then again my power my grace my life can work on the inside of you to lead you where I've called you to so Lord we just bless you Mm -hmm. we honor you we praise you God we thank you for today thank you for everything that you have provided for us Everything you have made available for us. Everything that you are attempting to renew our thinking Mm, so that we can see all that you have done and accomplished and how valuable it is. How exceedingly great what you have provided for us is. How your grace is sufficient. How you'll do the change. How you'll renew. How you'll guide. How you'll lead. And you'll never leave us without. Mm. And we thank Thank you for that, Lord. We bless you for it and we honor you. I pray for every person in this place. Mm-hmm. Pray for every person watching this recording, oh God. Allow all of our hearts to just be submitted unto you, to look to you, to trust in you, to depend upon you, to allow who you are to be revealed in that heart so that we, oh God, can be changed uh, by you. And we thank you for that. We bless you for it and we honor you. We ask these things in the name that is above every name. No it's in Jesus' name. Time time you you the turn. Turn. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. So please.